Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the Writer's Secrets book. I'm here today one more Friday and I have something so important to share with you. Like, I don't know if you realize it, but we are days away from the 1st of November, which means NaNoWriMo is literally round the corner. Yes, you're gonna start panicking now. I'm already on panic mode, but I'm so organized that sometimes i remind myself that i've done so well all prep october so i can actually take a deep breath and be okay with it but you may not be ready you might be missing something and this is the last video i'm gonna do before and around this is the last bit that you need so let's catch up on what we already spoke about it so we spoke about what prep october was we, we know already is getting prepared for nanorimo if you haven't done it already i mean you're running out of time i don't know how much free time you have but you need to speed up. Number two, we spoke about the type of writer that you can be. So you can be a plotter, which I kind of consider myself, especially this month, because I was in so much chaos working on two books at one. And then you can be a pantser, which is what I did on my first novel. I don't recommend it to you because you can mess up your whole brain and you won't be able to continue a series like this happens to me. Anyway, I spoke about that in other videos. You can go and watch them and then see where my drama is. And then you can be a planter, which means you are in between plotter and panzer. And basically, um, you are kind of doing some outlining, but you are not spending hours and hours and hours like other people we do to prepare ourselves to write a novel. Okay? Because basically, if you didn't know, NaNoWriMo is about writing 50,000 words in one month, which means it's around... 1667 68 words a day so yeah good luck if you haven't planned anything <laughs> but what we're speaking today is about the structure that you need for your novel i'm gonna cover two different type of structures i know it's gonna be a really long video but just sit there grab a notebook or grab your laptop or whatever it is that you write notes and then pay so much attention because i know again i'm gonna talk too much but i'm gonna give you the three act structure which actually i sometimes like to call it four we will speak about along in the video but we are going to talk about it for series for continuous series not like the one that i'm doing which is an episodic one which means i have to do an outlining for every single book i'm gonna explain that again in a little while but that's the two type of outlining that we're gonna do if you're doing a single book and if you're doing a series which in this case is gonna cover three books if you want more than three books you're just gonna have to extend everything a little bit more but let me get some coffee and let's get on with this because it's gonna be a long one to make you understand outlining a novel it's dividing your book on three parts number one which i heard a lot and maybe i felt the same thing when i started writing and it's a big mistake that doesn't mean you take each part of each act and that is one chapter no 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 no. that's why just pay attention okay don't think about that so we have three acts act two can be divided in two because that's one of the longest acts and then act three is one of the shortest just because it's the close-up of the story. Again, later on when we speak about series, it's a little bit different, okay? But now let's focus on one book. So we have three acts. Act one, it's the beginning, the setup of the story. Who your character is, what do they do, what is their fear, their desire, their misbelief. You're just presenting the world for us, the story, okay? Act two, it's the middle, it's the confrontation, it's when your protagonist make the decision of I want to be happy, I want to receive what I deserve and I want to have what I desire so I'm gonna have to stand up in the middle of the field and then just fight with anything and everything that comes my way no matter what. And then comes act three which is the end, the resolution, the moment when either everything goes really well or not really well for your protagonist it depends i don't believe on happy endings prince charming and flowers like not every book has to be started and finished like that and one thing to keep in mind which i think a lot of people forget is like we are creating a story it's all a piece of art and out of our imagination and everything but 
If you want your readers to love your story, you have to make those protagonists, every single character, I could say, unless they're like fictional, like magic or whatever, you have to make them human, you know what I mean? With their mistakes, they don't have to be perfect. They are not a role model, not especially at the beginning of the book. There's something that is troubling them. That's why they have to go through the three act structure. Okay, anyway, some of the questions you can ask yourself before you start writing is, why do I want to write this story? You know, like that will give us the theme. That will be the theme actually okay and then that's going to give us the roadmap to the characters rcs okay the theme can change along with the story yes like i started writing my first book as a romance just a romance and i end up turning it into like a mysterious roman erotic romance you know like it's inside the world of romance but it's not just all of these perfect, beautiful couple that nothing else happened around them more than I am single, I am single, let's be together and be happy ever after, okay? There's a lot of backstory that comes from book two and three. But when I'm talking about me, I'm talking about you, so let's keep going. So, act one. Act one is the opening of the novel, okay? The novel doesn't really start here, okay? That's also a confusion. That your character, every single character in your story, it's has a past it has a backstory okay you need to how i analyze this is like i am their therapist okay they just came today to my therapy room or my therapy session or however you want to call it i sit down with them and they come with a story they come with a back story hanging on their back and they are not 100 percent ready to throw it all out of me Oh, actually, yes, and I have to like, whoa, filter it up. Let's take it one step at a time, and then we work on it, okay? So, that your character has a backstory doesn't mean you start your book from the moment they born until they die, unless you want to create this type of mega, super huge sagas where this princess in this castle born, and then the story starts from the day that she born because she has all of these magic powers until she's older i mean if you want to do that yes okay fair enough start the book when she bones otherwise avoid it let's get worried to the question of what happened before my novel begins that's called the tick okay that is what is going to give you the idea and uh, oh okay this is what matters on my character past that is just making them be where they are today and starting the journey of where they are going today, okay? So we have the hook. The hook is how, is the opening act, is the, it's the first story bit, some people will call it, and it's an internal conflict, okay? That doesn't mean the hook is something that is actually happening. Well, it's it's external conflict is the plot, is about what's happening, okay? But then the internal conflict that happens before the inciting incident, which is kind of like step three on the act one. And that is why it matters what is happening to your protagonist. Okay, so let's say the external conflict is everything that surrounds your character. The internal conflict is what happened to your character before all of this and why it make them be who they are and why it matters to them that right now they are ready to tell their story or change their life forever, okay? Um, you can make this question to you, like, as I say, you're the kind of therapist for your characters. So you can ask them like, what does my protagonist believe? It will make them happy. And how is their fear stopping them going after it? That's quite important, you know, to understand like, okay, this is what happened before, which again, as I say, you don't have to include it in a book, but you should have it as the writer. But you don't have to focus around the world that it's around them. The world doesn't have feelings, you know? The, and a setting doesn't have emotions. Like, we care about what it is inside your protagonist. And when I'm reading, for me, the hook is the first few pages, okay? If you don't actually grab me from that moment, it's a really big chance that your reader will not stay there to continue figuring out what happened to your protagonist. And if you spend 
chapters and chapters explaining the path of your character again we're gonna get bored because you can actually explain all of that show all of that in near future in the story in a different way okay you don't have to throw everything to us in just the first few pages the important here is that you talk about your character like uh, how do they feel in that moment what something that happened to them that click that first bit that make them know like today my life is going to change that's it there's something in there it doesn't matter where they are living it doesn't matter much where they are working it doesn't matter much multiple external things and please do not put in the first chapter or the first few pages of your book or let's say the prologue do not put every single character of your book in there because you're going to confuse us so much and especially if those characters are not showing up much on your book if i'm on chapter 10 and the name of the person that was in the prologue show up again i'll be like who was this person and the idea that i have to go back 10 chapters to figure it out it's annoying so be really give who you need to give uh share what you need to share but your protagonist is the number one and unless there's somebody 100% involved that you're like, yeah, I have to, uh, avoid it. Do it in the next few more pages. Let us love your protagonist in the first few pages and be like, I can't wait to know more. What happened to you? Tell me all. I want to know more. Then, okay. A few paragraphs later, come the setup. There we go. Now, this is the second bit of the story. And you are already telling us that something is bothering your protagonist now you can give us a little bit more information about your protagonist where do they live where do they work so you we already connect with it now we want to know a little bit more about them and you're already letting us know they are a bomb back to explode like literally tick, 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 tick. okay we're waiting for that the inciting incident that this is where the things get good this is where things start to like come up and we know something is coming it's something that happened it's someone that pop up in their life it's something that changed that literally pushed your protagonist out of their comfort zone that's basically it so your protagonist been living this misbelief based on their fear and then something come and it's like oh no 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 no, no. that's not how we live <laughs> out of the comfort zone and there are one good question or two actually that you can ask yourself to give you more answers before you start writing which will be like why do the inciting incident matter to my protagonist and how does it push it out of the comfort zone okay and you need to think that your protagonist at that point is going to be running away from fear it's just like oh no 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 this is coming i'm not ready to face this please 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 leave me alone comes up the build up okay so the build up is you showing us that your protagonist has to face everything okay it's kind of like you're putting your protagonist on the war field and then everybody's stepping back and it's like i'm so sorry this one is on you you can't just run away from this one anymore um your protagonist is well aware of what they are dealing with and it's how you show their internal struggles you know like how you then let us know a little bit more about their backstory so you are telling like this is something that happened this is something other thing that happened and da 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 or i am going through this now because of this that happened before so internal conflict which again that's the story or the plot external conflict was the plot it's like the internal conflict is just like coming up because of the inciting incident that happened okay which again is like there's war coming let's get we go to the last two bits of act one which one is the first plot point okay this is when your protagonist is gonna make a decision that will determine anything that happens next um but there are gonna be so many obstacles on the way and all of this is just your protagonist making a decision based on their fear and their misbelief so you can ask yourself that like how is my protagonist going to react based on their fear and misbelief 
what decision is your protagonist gonna make to avoid the pain that comes in their future because of that decision that they are gonna have to make there comes our first pinch point so this is when the antagonist the force of the antagonist the opposition the villain it doesn't have to be a villain this is something you have to also keep in mind antagonist can be anything and everything it doesn't have to be a person doesn't have to be a villain doesn't have to be the worst case enemy no way it can be something imaginary it can be even things coming from the past it can be family members it can be your own protagonist inner thoughts like their mind reminding them like you should not be doing this because these are gonna be the consequences are you sure you're ready for this so you don't have to put the label on somebody and be like this is my antagonist unless your story have a villain and then that's it all right you're aware by this point that there's something coming to bother your protagonist that is not gonna make it easy and that antagonist that opposition force is just basically gonna make your protagonist face even their fears more and then we move to act two act two basically is reaction oh my this reaction plot twist action so everything has a consequence basically which is true every decision we made in life have consequences so now is the time for your protagonist to face the moment of making decisions suffering the consequences end of it so we are in the pre midpoint pre midpoint is that your protagonists want to pursue their goal okay and they want to be happy they want to succeed they want to achieve their goals but there is something standing in the middle they are not responding to what is happening they are reacting to what is happening so over here this is kind of like for me quite of an important part of the story because it's like you are showing a lot of emotions from your character and a lot of their fear is literally page to page page to page and that's when we connect the most with a lot of the characters of a lot of stories the thing is because as i said before there is not a specific chapter where you should put this in each book is gonna be in a different moment but let's go for the question going to execute their plan okay how are they going to achieve the goal avoiding pain simply and easy okay give them a plan even if i stupid and just let them go for it why not now comes a really good one which is the plot twist the game changing everything it's about to go down yep What's the game changing going to do? It's just basically gonna shift the protagonist's plan and goal. And obviously this is when you surprise all of your readers and it's like, whoa, I thought this person was like this. Now they do this. Okay, what unexpected thing is going to change on my protagonist's plan? Why okay. does it matter based off the, on their desired and fear? That's also a really good question you can make yourself. And how is it gonna change the game to my protagonist? Like, okay, we thought they were going for A, they are going for B, how is now everything gonna change? So it's kind of like you're reversing the story and what your reader thought is gonna happen, it's not happening. Which that's really interesting in all the stories because it's kind of like people is expecting what it is to come and then suddenly it is not. And then we go to the post meet point. So this is, when your protagonists need to change their goal 100% okay there are gonna be new obstacles that are coming on the we can see them we can see them coming and then they are even pushed further away from their comfort zone okay so you can ask yourself like what is my protagonist's new plan going to be based on the game changing that just happened okay and how does my protagonist think their new goal is going to be a success so they know if they go this way, it might take them to the happiness, but it's gonna be painful. They took this other way. What new actions are they gonna make? And what do they think is gonna work? Okay. And comes 
the second pinch point. So we did first pinch point on act one, now comes part two. And this is again, when the antagonist, the opposition, show up a little bit closer than it was before. So whatever you assign the antagonist um, role, this is when they are gonna come back and be like, hey, I'm here again, do you remember me? I'm here to bring you trouble. Are we ready? So um, it's just here to destroy your protagonist's life. If you didn't figure that out already, I'm just telling you, that's what they're gonna do. And then your question is, how are you gonna show it? Because especially if it's something that it doesn't exist, you need to put it on a point that your reader is just like oh my god oh my god and we thought we got rid of this but we did not and then we move to act three which again as i said before act three is just one of the shorter bits um it has a lot of uh, points but they can all kind of be squished as one that doesn't mean the one only chapter okay but you know what i mean you don't have to extend it much as you're supposed to have done on act one or especially act two so we have the supposed victory okay so your protagonist is gonna feel like ah oh, yeah i've done it i achieved my goal i'm founding my happiness i'm done with this nobody can destroy me right now why does your protagonist think they are victorious why do they think that what do they make them believe that they here have achieved that and then so what is it happening that make them feel they're so close to their happiness because i don't know you but i know what is coming in the disaster so disaster is part two of the act three and then everything goes wrong everything that you could possibly imagine goes wrong this is where kingdoms get broken when relationships get broken or when big secrets come up especially in romance and all of these things you know what i mean like this is a crazy momentum. And then why does it matter? And how does it force them to 100% now, yes or yes, you have to face your fear. Like you've been trying to reach your happiness, but you were like tiptoeing. Now is the time to start up straight, be strong enough because you need to get ready for part three, which is the dark moment, okay? like they are confused they are broken they are lost they're disappointed they're hopeless like they need a really bad moment a really i don't know what to do with my life anymore so you can put part four which is the aha moment okay we are two steps away from finishing the story so the aha moment it's like right now your protagonist already has reached rock bottom and they're like okay i am ready to face everything i'm not scared anymore there is nothing that is gonna happen to me that can stop me right now so what lesson have they learned after the dark moment now is your point to show it and be like okay now is when i'm ready for the climatic confrontation which is when your protagonist is going to face the biggest challenge that they have to face in the entire story. So what they've done before, that was little battles. Now they are about to fight for their life, fight for the war. You just have to prove that they have learned and prove that they have changed. So how are you going to prove the transformation of your protagonist? Because you are literally about to finish your book because you have the victory the victory is the resolution it ties loose ends it just covers and close this story and you have to ask yourself how does my character change if you take victory and you take the hook or even you take the bread meat point sorry i'm checking on my list so i don't miss up look if you compare victory with act one or act two and your character haven't changed your protagonist haven't changed i'm so sorry you need to rewrite your book simple and easy as that i know it sounds horrible and i've done it but it's absolutely fine you need to understand that the climatic confrontation is just proving the changes on your protagonist there i'm not fear anymore and i'm gonna change this and i'm gonna change that and then victory is the close of the novel 
you have to have everything figured out by now and we should be presented with a different person so again we go back to the therapy session the hook is when the mess up character comes to you the mess up um, um person sits in front of you with all of these problems with all of these fears their desire and their misbelief and you have worked so hard to make them reach victory so let's say victory it's the end of your journey as a therapist and as a person that you're treating and you are about to tell to that person okay now you are ready to walk out in the world and then just be happy and have it all what you deserve will achieve it if you don't feel that way by the end of act three again as i say you have to reconsider your story and rewrite a lot of things or rewrite the whole story or maybe not rewrite the whole story but go through many of those points that i say and consider the changes that you can do okay on a series when you decide to do a series it's because you have a really long story to tell okay um this series will as i say be a continuous series a one series that is just like told by the same person you can add few characters but let's say i couldn't do it because my series is an episodic series which means book one is told by one man and then book two is by the sister and then book three is by the father of them so i couldn't do this because it wouldn't make sense but if your protagonist is absolutely the same one on three books this is the act for you uh what are we gonna ask same like what we did before like why do i want to write this story okay and what is the message the theme that i want my characters to live on like the journey they want to go what is that thing and then what lesson do i want to teach the audience what do i want them to receive back from this all right those are themes to consider um as i said before as well in previous videos and in this video is like the theme can change slightly as you move on but you are not gonna be writing romance on book one and then suddenly change to horror by the end of the book it doesn't make sense okay the theme i mean inside the same thing you are just moving a little bit along and rather than say oh it's pure romance oh uh, no it's mysterious romance because it has mystery as well inside of it or no horror who wants horror and romance i was about to say that again i don't know maybe it's because we're on halloween anyway book one so book one is the inception it's the first presentation you give your readers about this series if they don't connect with this book i'm gonna find really hard that they connect with book two and three we are gonna start doing three really important questions. Question number one is, why do you wanna write this story? Question number two is, what message, your theme, how is it gonna go inside your character journey? How does it fit on the life of your character journey? And number three is, what, let's say, lesson you're gonna teach the audience. Like when I read this book, what am I gonna learn about it? I mean, you might be like learn something what do you mean there's always hidden themes that teach you something like a person that never trusts how do they learn to trust a person that doesn't want to love somebody then they learn how to love i don't know you know there's so much thing behind the theme and it is true that you can start your story with with a theme that you more or less know what it is and then dive more in as you move along with the story that's absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with it but let's say you're not going to start the first bit of the book with a romance and then all of the sudden change to a horror it won't make any sense you will still have to be inside the romance genre unless you're changing completely the book and then just see if it's mystery or uh, suspense or romance fantasy you know you can go in that but inside the block of romance if that makes sense i'm a romance writer so i'm obsessed with it i'm a hyperless romantic that's why but yeah let's move on so we have book one book one is the inception okay it's the beginning of the story it's the same way you will start a standalone book but obviously it doesn't end the same way and why is it important is one give one entire book to the presentation of the story 
it's just really good because you have at least 50,000 words to express everything. That doesn't mean you come and tell me the story of your protagonist from literally the day that they born until the day that they die, okay? It doesn't, I don't think it's necessary unless you're in these fantasy worlds where this magical princess born in this specific day and we need to know that and then we move along, okay? We are saying like you're explaining who your character is and what they are going through and then you leave us on the cliffhanger and then we move along, but let's go with it. So we start with the hook. That's the opening of the story. That's how everything starts. And what the hook actually is, the hook is the protagonist's inner conflict. Basic and simple, desire versus fear. Boom, easy peasy. Doesn't have to be a full chapter. It doesn't have to overcomplicate everything because it's just your protagonist think, how will they be happy? What will bring them happiness and contempt them in life? Boom. And then how is their fear stopping them from going after it? So I want this. If I have this in my life, I will be happy. But I'm afraid of this and that's why I don't go behind it. So that's why I'm happy. Hello. Welcome to my life. The setup. So the setup is basically show us as readers that your protagonist is a disaster waiting to happen. It's a bomb that is ticking. Okay. And then it's showing us that your protagonist is about to make a really bad decision based on their fear and just because they desire something so much. Now is when you show your readers like how is your protagonist not going to make the right decision and then everything is just going to go sideways. Simple and easy. All of these two bits could be in chapter one, you know what I mean? You don't have to extend things so much because you're just presenting everything and then it comes the first inciting incident, okay? Where this is where you go a little bit more on detail on something because this is when your protagonist is pushed outside of their comfort zone, okay? They've been in a space for a very long time based on their fear that I know what I want to be happy, but I'm so scared of, I'm not gonna go for it. And then something suddenly comes and it's like, oh no, my friend, out, face it. So why does the inciting incident matter to my protagonist? That's one of your biggest questions that you have to make yourself. And how does it push them out of their comfort zone? Like what happened that make them be like, oh, oh what is it going? Because Based on that comes the first fear-based decision. So your protagonist make a fear-based decision to avoid the pain in the future, or they think so, but they don't know yet, you do as a writer. So how is my protagonist going to respond to the inciting incident, okay? Giving their fear and misbelief about the world. Simple. What decision are they going to make to avoid the most pain? Okay, they know what they want will give them this. They don't want it. So they're gonna go in the other direction and be like, I'm gonna be fine. Just avoid it, avoid it, okay? And then comes the first pinch point. So the first pinch point, this is when the antagonist, when we feel there's an antagonist on the far, 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 far away that will come really soon to bother our protagonist. Antagonist doesn't have to be a person, doesn't have to be a villain unless it fits your story. It doesn't even have to be a physical person. It can be your own protagonist's inner thoughts, their own past, that they know if they give this step, all of the things from their past will come to haunt them and they are scared of it because they don't want to face what happened to them or whatever. So you can show a little bit that antagonist, that opposition coming and how that it's gonna put your protagonist a little bit on the edge and be like, oh, okay. But it's not yet close. It's about to come. Be patient. Just put it in there. Let us know it's coming. 
Now we come to act two. Act two is your pre midpoint reactionary hero, okay? So your protagonist is start to execute in their plan, okay? They want to achieve their goal, but they want to avoid pain, which is really hard, let's be honest. But how is my protagonist going to execute their plan? So what is their step-by-step -step plan to make this happen? Then comes the game-changing midpoint. So something hands your protagonist plan and change the game they thought they could go this way and they will be fine but something happened that is like no no you can't go this way sorry you have to go that other way so what thing is going to happen to put my protagonist plan to an end and be like no you can't do this and why does it matter to your protagonist giving their fear and their desire all right and how is it going to change everything for your protagonist because we have the post midpoint action hero so, so your protagonist again is gonna think that this is gonna give them their goal while they avoid their fear okay again they are still delusional they still not understand it so what is it gonna be your protagonist new plan based on the game changing midpoint that we've done okay then comes the second pinch point as the last bit of act two, which is the antagonist is closer. So you already mentioned it to us, now it's stepping closer. Not as close as to be really threat about it, but close enough for us to know that there is something coming on act three that is just gonna change everything. But here come your delusional protagonist on act three on the supposed victory. And your protagonist thinks that they found the solution for everything. Everything is all right. We figured it out. We're gonna find happiness. And then why do they think it's just that? Like, excuse me, no, it's not. And what happening to make them feel they're so close to happening at last? Because we know what is happening. So it's coming. Now we come to the disaster. The disaster is the second inciting incident. This is the preparation for book two, okay? It's kind of the disaster that we have on a standalone, but the difference is that you are not gonna come up with an aha moment just yet, because we are going to book two. So what is it gonna happen? It's just gonna mean a lot to your protagonist, and it's just gonna leave us just there hanging, okay? What does it force them to realize that there is a disaster coming and they are the ones to be blamed for they made the decision and this is the consequences that again we're gonna read them on book two but first you can leave them with a cliffhanger okay that show us okay this is what happened this is how bad we're doing right now and then this is where they stand at the edge cliffhanger just stay there because book two is coming and then you move to book two so book two is the journey okay we kind of start book two with act one with a hook again it's not that you have to start all over again because it's a continuation so we should feel as readers that we are continuing the moment we have left on book one do you know so, the tv shows and the movies when we know um uh, TV show, it's gonna be a continuation and it's gonna have so many seasons. Or a movie has so many continuous movies as well that we know there's something coming up and they leave us there like, oh, okay, this is not a close up. There's, there must be another season or there must be another book um, movie coming. <laughs> I'm so much in books that it sounds as hard to talk about something that is no book. So, do you know that bit on? a new season or on a new movie where you get the first few minutes are basically the continuation of the last scene that you watch on the previous season or on the previous movie this is the same you're kind of putting your readers back on track so they more or less remember especially if like me you take over a year to put book two out even mine is not a continuation but anyway if you're gonna take a long time putting book two book three out it's good to give this little hook to them to be like remember what happened before 
on on dower beads i know when you are absolutely reading the entire series together this bit can be a little bit bored because it's like oh i just close one book and open another i know already but it has to be done because you never know when your readers are gonna take the book okay so we know your protagonist is facing a major disaster a major problem and then we have to present that which again can be done in a few paragraphs and then we go to the reaction to disaster so we take what happened on book one okay and then your protagonist need to figure it out where to go from here and then you can make two simple questions that are just gonna give us what we need which is like why is my protagonist um reaction going to be to this disaster given their fear and misbelief we're still in fear and misbelief we haven't changed math yet we haven't reached that point yet and then how can i show the readers that the protagonist is responding and not reacting to what is happening again they are on all of this naive moment of like no no it's okay i figure it out i figure it out but they continue making mistakes and comes the second fear based decision so your protagonist decides what they think is logic okay we know as a reader is based on fear and that a lot is to come that's logic again we're talking about three books okay we can't just close everything up right now so what is my protagonist deciding in right now and how do you show the readers that this is still a fear-based decision we are still far from showing our readers that your protagonist has changed and is becoming a better person and everything okay keep that in mind it's too soon to change too much your character unless you want to create a really bored half of second book and completely waste of three book the third book okay so it's here comes to finish act one it will be the third pinch point so the third pitch point this is when your antagonist force is so close that even your protagonist doesn't know in how much trouble they are you know as a reader so how can i show that they are so close and how can i show that my protagonist it's just not realizing the trouble that they are in it's just like wake up this is the moment when you want to shout at your books have you ever feel that in the books when you literally want to shake that character and be like wake up this is happening so this is the moment okay there we go and then we move to act two so in act two we have the pre-meet point reactionary point this is the protagonist thinking they make the progress they are going to take make the right decision but actually they are literally falling in the antagonist trap like big 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 trouble it's coming okay why do your protagonist thinks they are doing it right like they are making the correct decision that's what we need to know right now and then how is playing right into the plans of the antagonist how is actually the protagonist changing everything and do what the antagonist want again we are not speaking about a figure a person it can be anything else or actually it can be a villain so it's up to you how you want to do that depends on what is your theme and your story about so here comes the game changing midpoint okay something unexpected okay change your protagonist plans they are making a shocking discovery about something and then you can ask yourself like what is this unexpected thing going to happen to make my protagonist plan again what's going on what's happening and why does it matter to your protagonist given their desire and fear and how is it going to change the game like again what is gonna happen that is just gonna change everything all over again we thought we were going a good way we thought we were going a bad way now again what is going on and then we move to the post midpoint action hero so your protagonist again will come with a new plan based on the game changing midpoint and then they think that this goal seriously this goal is gonna bring them happiness and avoid their fear okay so then again what is the plan going to be and how are they going to react and here comes the conflict the action okay the protagonists that get close to their goal they just taste the goal okay but no without a lot of struggles nothing is gonna be easy for your protagonist and then 
So you need to show us why they are fighting so hard to reach victory. Why this matter so much that they will literally do anything to fight for this. Really important. And then I could say this is kind of like book two is the, one of the biggest ones okay because it's like you introduce us this is the big big thing and then now we move to act three which is preparing us for book three and here comes a small aha moment again this is getting quite similar to how will a standalone uh, book will be so you get a small aha moment okay which also um will Put them in the right direction because we need to start guiding them to the right direction for book three okay but then um it's also show them like i've been wrong about this all this time um not on everything okay but they think they know how to fix it so what personal realization is going to done on my protagonist and enable them to face the climax for this book okay how are they going to cross one of their fears and continue to the next story bit now comes the first climatic confrontation so your protagonist put their life in the line what they think is the final act of courage to accomplish their happiness but they have no idea we are not yet done so what dramatic action will my protagonist take in order to achieve their desire and then how do they put their own life and happiness on the line to defeat the antagonist force and win the war but here come another cliffhanger they have made the decision they are done with it they are going all for it and then your protagonist discovered that they actually have not won the war in fact they've lost something very important that put the stakes so high and this is how you are going to create the new problem for your protagonist that it's gonna be faced on book three which is the biggest and close up of the stories and here comes book three which is the battle right now we already know that your protagonist is changing we know that your protagonist has faced a lot of things and one of them is the antagonist and they thought they won but they didn't. they didn't and now we need to help them figure it out how to really won so again we start with a hook a little presentation of what happened in the last um bit of book two and recap a little bit about the problem or the consequences of that issue a little bit and then we have the build up so it's just like your protagonist start to figure it out how are they going to face the big conflict ahead of them okay so how's your protagonist still struggling with their deeply rooted fear and misbelief as they prepare to face their greatest challenge of them all now is when yes so yes there's no way back coming to an end okay when we are just on act one but then comes the third fear based decision and this will kind of be the last fear decision that they do before they change so your protagonist come up with a plan this one is to win the world to accomplish their greatest goal like they are so tired of planning something and not getting what they want that right now is like no way this is not so how can they be smarter than the antagonist and accomplish their goal and win that's a really good question you should make yourself and how does the protagonist try to avoid their fear even in their strategy and battle plans so step back the antagonist force flex its power it seems impossible to overcome so how does the antagonist force intimidate the protagonist and try to make them back down what makes the antagonist seem undefeatable so now is the moment of the antagonist is stronger than your protagonist. There's nothing they can do. It's not going to work. Doesn't matter. Better go back and just live in fear and in misbelief forever. But comes act two, which is the post setback action hero. So the side characters will renew your protagonist's faith and be like, you can do it. And 
like how do your other characters are going to make your protagonists recover their hope, their faith, they're like, I can do it. And then why do they believe your protagonists can win? I mean, you have characters coming up along the story all this time, but right now it's when rather than standing alone in the middle of the battlefield, your protagonists, the people that really care for them and the people that really want them to get the happiness is going to stand on their side and be like, you can do it, we we'll believe in you and we will defeat this antagonist. And there comes the rising action. So the tension begins to rise for the climax, okay? We are reaching the end of the book. So your protagonist face the biggest challenge of them all, basically. You can put it together with the characters, the side characters, and then they are gonna do it together. And it's just gonna go, again, it all depends on the theme of what your book is. But then you can show how are they gonna mentally and physically gonna get ready for that huge challenge to come which is the execution of the plan. So your protagonist is gonna face the antagonist 100%. Like, this is what I'm gonna do, and this is what I'm gonna do to win. So what emotions and fear do my characters struggle with as they step into the ring, into the battlefield with the antagonist force? And here comes act three. So act three is gonna start with a supposed victory. They think that everything has changed but there's a disaster and supposed defeat coming so oh wait your antagonist has a second plan he's not yet defeated so what does this disaster specifically means for your protagonist and how is completely disarm them and make them face of their greatest fear and misbelief once more they thought they win they haven't and then now what now comes the dark moment. The dark moment, it's basically in the standalone specialist when they feel like defeated, heartbroken, helpless, like they are done. Like they can't do this. I'm lost. I'm done. I'm just going to stay where I am. I don't care, whatever. But it's when your protagonist actually question, how can I defeat this antagonist force? Because I have no hope. I don't know what else to do. Even all of these characters has helped me and I still cannot do it. So how does this disaster bring your character to the darkest and lowest moment on their life before comes the aha moment? So your protagonist actually realized that their fear and their misbelief has been the real enemy the whole time. So your own self, it's your worst enemy. Not the invisible antagonist, not the rest of the world, but yourself. And your fear and your misbelief is what has brought your protagonist to this point, okay? Now, this is the grand finale, okay? This is the end when then they, they realize that they have to crush their misbelief, destroy their misbelief, don't be afraid anymore, and then defeat the antagonist force, win the war, get what they want, however you wanna call it. And then how is your protagonist going to overcome that fear and continue to the climax, okay? They're not afraid anymore. This is when you can prove that your protagonist has changed and has learned the lesson and is ready for it, okay? I mean, you can also say what lesson have they learned, if there's anything like that. So comes the final battle. So. Your protagonist is stronger, has more courage, believe more on themselves, they're fearless, they are ready for it, and then now is when you have to prove us the full transformation of your protagonist. If you haven't done it by now, you have an issue because we only have victory and resolution, which is the end. So victory basically is your protagonist wins, the antagonist lose, boom, that's it. And then you can show how do they defeat the antagonist. And the resolution at the end is like, wrap up, we're done, everything is done. And then close up showing how does your protagonist has changed in three books. That's why I say, you don't have to show any changes, but until now. So it's not only take book three and say, how much has my character changed from book one to book three? 
I mean, let's say book one is the bomb ticking, the disaster. Book two is kind of like, I want to change. I want to change. I want to change. And book three is the biggest change. So if by book three you haven't made the big change, I'm so sorry, but you have to reconsider your book. And there's so many writers, they do it in different ways. Some writers want to write the three books first before they publish anything to make sure that everything is tied up. Other ones, we are a little bit braver. We write one book, put it out. We write one book, put it out. We write one book, put it out. And then if there's mistakes, we just pull our hair out of our heads. And then that's it because there's nothing we can do anymore. The book is already out. But you can prepare yourself for that. That's why it's really good that you work on these three act structures for series or for standalones. So you have all the answers and you know by the time you write book three, where do your protagonist has to go? If you can make it even better, awesome. But at least make sure you know where is your protagonist should be by the time you start writing and finishing book three, okay? So you can see so much information. I know that um, I'm still learning how to put a file here so you can download this document, but feel free to send me a comment. I, um, I can send you an email with the file so you will have it on digital or contact me on my social media. You can find everything on the description box down below. And then I'm gonna send you the um, file where you can actually answer all of these questions directly and then fill it up or you can print it out and do it manually. It depends how you like to work. I like to work both ways. So I have in multiple sources all my information, but thank you so much for passing by. Thank you so much for staying here the whole video. And I hope I have helped you answer your questions and give you all the resources that you need to plot your novel and get ready for either a standalone or a series. Again, I know it's so much information, but once you start answering the questions, you will see how important all of this is. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. And don't forget to press the notification bell so you will get notified every time I upload a video that so far right now is nearly every day. How is it gonna be November? We don't know because it's not all right one. I'm gonna be really busy and crazy and I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life, but I will be here again for you. So thank you again one more time and I'll see you really soon. Bye.